right all right what's up everybody what's going on welcome to the basement again yo 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 what's going on everybody we're yeah, back yeah so it's good to be with y'all again as always uh welcome to the basement where theology meets the thoughts of life and we're excited about um just joining uh with you and seeing you in the comments section i see you haps what's going on cameron walker uh and there's other folks in there judy and jay fisher what's going on it's uh great to be back good to be here again with you just make sure you share and like uh the video uh, it's important just to spread the word let people know facebook.com slash wrath and grace let people know what's going on here uh, again we love to interact with your comments so make sure you comment on the comment section on the topic at hand uh that's what we do here at the basement um if you want to go to a group page you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash the basement and there you can uh join us uh actually where we ask questions uh, pertaining to the topic that we're about to discuss and uh we would love just to hear your comments we would even quote uh some of the comments made or even develop some topics out of some of the things that are said so it's, it's kind of like a way of interacting with you and uh you can post ideas about topics that you think would be important to discuss so go to facebook.com slash groups slash the basement and support uh wrath and grace .com is our website and there there's also links uh other uh podcasts uh dope podcasts you can get into um see uh the links are there we have shirts we have all sorts of materials there uh to support the ministry so make sure you go to wrath and grace .com and support what god is doing uh in this ministry and last just want to let you know about the patreon account uh you know one of these days definitely we'll get up and run that joint uh it's coming you know what i'm saying you just gotta <laughs> wait we're post mail about that uh, it's gonna, <laughs> you know what i'm saying so, very uh, optimistic yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you have to you have to be optimistic definitely about that but um so yeah support patreon.com slash the basement 717 will definitely help us to pay the bills here in the basement as there are other things that we want to get uh some equipment and things like that to make this more of a enjoyable time um, for us so thank you for your support we appreciate y'all everybody on the comment section welcome uh spread the word let people know this is the season for now and uh definitely we're excited about talking about this topic here so my man wayne was good how you been yo 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 we're back tonight is the season finale episode 80 lord willing we're gonna talk about it tonight today is inauguration day uh it's also uh most recently <laughs> there's history made with trump being impeached twice <laughs> i don't think i mentioned that last week if that happened already by the time we went alive last week um and he's still silenced um I haven't heard anything from him, but then again, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I've been kind of out of the loop. Yeah. We were just talking about that before we went live. Me and Los, I was I was asking him, yo, did you hear anything about Inauguration Day? And we both looked at each other and <laughs> we admitted that we've been out of the loop. Yeah. Um, By choice, of course. Sometimes you have to be protective of your own sanity especially in this time right yeah because everything's just so convoluted so uh p polarized so uh touchy too it's like you know what i'm saying yeah when we get to most of these news uh breaking news reports um i usually wait a couple days i've mm -hmm. learned to wait a couple days and to let people fight I'm not jumping into the mosh pit. By the way, one day, <laughs> <laughs> I bring that up because one of these days, Lord willing, Lord willing, we're going to um, we're going to do an episode, uh, something like mosh pit Christianity, mosh pit, mosh pit theology, something, <laughs> something to do with the mosh pit because that's what these people are doing out here. They are jumping into the mosh pit, and I've never been that type. I've never been that type to just jump right into it be knocked in the head and just think that's something fun to do mm. like i'm good yeah no 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 no. i'm good i don't need to be in the middle of all of these debates and all of this craziness that's happening right now yeah. i got 
like they say bigger fish to fry <laughs> we got we got church to we got a church to tend to you know what i mean like we yeah. got families to raise we got family and friends that need saving we got people in our community that need to hear the gospel so yeah i've just I, i've just learned to back away from those issues because my intervention or even me debating someone that's not really going to change too much so anyway um tonight we wrap up season four and we're going to discuss the importance of being of being down to god's sovereignty oh man ah i, I must have typed that wrong on facebook <laughs> why didn't you tell me <laughs> i don't know you weren't on facebook that's why yeah yeah you know, um, to of bowing of down the importance of bowing down to God's sovereignty mm. even while accepting responsibility for our actions um, and with it being inauguration day it's only right that we give our personal thoughts and predictions on the upcoming days that we're facing so join us join the discussion tonight um <laughs> he said I th Haps thought uh, that I met met mosh pits for real no 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 no. but that's what it's like yeah people are literally yeah. jumping right into them joints like right in y'all know what I mean. each other going crazy y'all they wilding they're yeah. wilding like yeah. they're, they're living for that mosh pit life so anyway <laughs> let's go forward with that my question for you guys in the audience and i thought this was a perfect question i'm gonna throw it right in the comment section you guys feel free to go ahead and like the video go ahead and share the video you know how al algorithms work um we need your support to get this video out to as many people as we as we can so go ahead and like it share it keep on commenting and be in the comment section with us now i'm gonna put a question there what's your thoughts on the new president and his team question for audience and los you can answer that because I, I don't think you have to necessarily be updated on the news just give me your thoughts yeah i i know enough politics to to know what's going on so yeah it again it gets touchy right because people try to push you to a camp and i'm you know so what i like to say as far as far as my political views is that i'm a christian who definitely sides with being conservative but i don't call myself quote unquote conservative as a political label um, I care about things uh, because of the scriptures, right? Right. Um, so I would definitely, uh, I have concerns <clears throat> with the current administration right now. Um, of course, I see the racist tendencies of his past. Uh, you know, we can't deny those. Uh, Charlemagne the God actually uh, didn't vote, he said, for Biden, but for Harris. You know, because of, you know, what, what is blatantly like obvious, uh, Joe Biden does have a track record, you know, with some racial policy, some policies that are look racist. Some people right? would bring up the same argument, not racist, but not being very helpful to the black community on Kamala's end. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, when she was uh, I forgot what her position was in California, uh, attorney general or something. She definitely had policies in place that incarcerated a lot of black men in California. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So these are things we can't ignore. You know what I mean? And they will have an effect on their current, uh, you know, uh, administration. You know, don't get it twisted. Um, so you have that layer to deal with. Um, so I, I question his sincerity uh, towards the black community, towards the Hispanic community. He said some things even during his uh, run that were very troubling uh did you already bring up the fact that you're not black if you don't vote for joe biden <laughs> you know what i'm saying it, yeah we can't ignore those things and we're not saying those things because we side with trump right i didn't vote for trump mm. right um I, I couldn't vote in good conscience you know what i'm saying um for other reasons and i, I don't want to get into that but i think uh you know there's just some blatantly obvious things with this current administration that we should be concerned with uh, and, you know, but the thing is, uh, what I don't like, too, is how a lot of conservatives uh, that call themselves Christian are acting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, almost as if God is not sovereign, like he wasn't involved <clears throat> in this whole thing. Uh, God is definitely in control, you know, and I got something to say to you all at the end in our conclusion, too. 
hopefully to encourage some of the conservatives but it definitely looks gloomy on the conservative end and on the republican end but as far as being a christian i would say you know here you know if, if it means that things get worse for christians then all that means is that it's going to get better as far as you know the purification of the church you know what i mean so so anyway those are my brief thoughts on it i'm concerned about his policies on abortion some of the things that are going to happen there um but again you know i hold to a, a sovereign god who's in control and uh you know he does what he pleases mm. so that's you know what's helped me and maybe it could help you all too is that it's definitely helped me to even in the trump administration it's helped me to think in a two kingdom type of way and uh there's some relief that i gained from knowing that this world is not my home right i'm of another kingdom i'm in the world but not of it mm. you know so that's helped me yeah yeah um so. i asked another question i couldn't help myself <laughs> couldn't help but ask this question i said who voted who did you vote for and why mm. yeah i asked it <laughs> um you didn't vote no i didn't vote so there you go yeah. um now that's anathema for a lot of conservatives you know but yeah i know all right again, we, we'll get into that we'll, yeah. we'll actually get yeah. into that i i promise we'll get into that so let's move forward here tonight i think that it's good that as we're doing the wrap up we talk about some lessons that we've learned in this past season mm. and i say past season starting with august we started season four back in august and here we are six months later mm. 20 episodes later and i'm asking the question what lesson did you learn last season maybe that added to what you already learned or something brand new that you got revelation on <laughs> charismatic no, i'm joking i'm joking oh <laughs> somebody said they voted for kanye That's oh, what's, uh, G gordon said that gordon oh uh, i don't believe it <laughs> well he probably wrote it in you could do that right oh okay you could vote for anybody on the right end right that's probably what i should have done was vote for jesus you the know? birthday party oh. was that kanye oh his oh. was the birthday party yeah yeah anyway <laughs> <laughs> um you're asking me right so you want me to respond to that which um, uh yeah what lessons yeah you i i think the big lesson for me is that i'm a i'm of another kingdom man it's just that reminder you know i it, it, i was almost forced to uh to um really dig into that because of how divisive and cruel the culture has become right or already was but really manifested it in the season um the fallenness of the world was clear again to me you know what the scripture said about the world was very clear again mm -hmm. as it always is uh and then uh, one thing that i was encouraged by was how the church could be strengthened even through turbulent times mm. it's not always like you know i've seen our church continues to stay steadfast you know what i'm saying uh, isn't that what it should come back yeah to, yeah which is yeah the church yeah. what is your involvement with the church yeah and this isn't to like down any christians that are out there that aren't going to a local church but if you aren't this is when it probably would affect you the most mm. because as a christian you're gonna feel out of place in the world yeah and if you don't have a local church to fall back on yeah you're really gonna feel out of place yeah, and it's man. gonna affect you in a different way and it might cause you to totally withdraw from culture mm. or it might bring you out into the culture a little bit more and leave you more vulnerable mm. i'm not saying it's always bad but yeah it is dangerous it is yeah. dangerous to not be part of the flock yeah and the other thing too is uh you know i do believe that you're politics can't be separated from your faith right so you know because your faith is your convictions mm. but i think it's important to make those distinctions still okay. right because some people confuse their political uh identity with being christian and it's like being christian informs how you view things and not the other way around so i think faith in politics understanding the difference 
for me was another reminder. And then I was also pushed uh, to think more locally than globally. Mm. You know what I mean? Like we, we were talking about the church, my, uh, my need to be immediate rather than acting like I could be global and effective on Facebook or social media, which I'm not saying you can't be. What I'm saying is at the expense of being local, some people have just thought social media or even outside of their immediate context yeah. there's a price to pay for that i think um and so those are some of the things that really stuck out to me in this season man to be honest yeah um to, yeah just to be more christian in my immediate context you yeah. know to, to be faithful in my immediate context and with you being full-time now full-time pastor um you're gonna see more and more of that <laughs> yeah uh, with you going yeah. to the gym now you're gonna see more and more of that yeah <laughs> right. like I, just those little changes to your life making a major impact on it i could yeah. imagine yeah the warm weather is going to be coming out in a few months and then mm -hmm. then and and if we're not locked down by the big bad wolf everything <laughs> is going to change for us yeah those of us that live in pa you know who i'm talking about <laughs> you know how in the bible um there were certain like in book of revelation a lot of post mail they say that uh john was speaking of nero and they knew who he was talking about right mm. he didn't really have to say his name he just gave a little description of who he was talking about and they knew so when i called him the big bad wolf those of us in pa pennsylvania we know who that is <laughs> <laughs> right talking about tom wolf so yeah. anyway yeah. um that's the guy who chooses whether we're going to be on lockdown or not or at least encouraged yeah so anyway um there's gonna be a lot of things happening in the future uh you know coming in the soon in the soon future um very soon i would believe um but before we get into predictions and stuff like that i will just mention a few lessons that we learned just looking back a couple months um i've learned that culture politics and man's traditions have taken over the american church in a major way mm. uh, we've seen those three right there culture politics man's traditions um just really uh, they stick out like a sore thumb whenever you're wrestling with these topics mm. um then we also see another lesson that i learned was uh false teachers and false prophets are still running rampant um <laughs> And I don't mean just false teachers and false prophets that call themselves Christians either. Because uh, Carl Ellis, he does a really good job at, um, he did a really good job at explaining and helping me to understand what a cultural prophet looks like. Hmm. So there's prophets in our culture that we live in. Um, in my hip hop culture, somebody like that would be like a J. Cole or a Jay Z. You look to them as a cultural prophet. You know what I mean? And um, he. <laughs> Jay Z, though? But really, yeah, he I did. He, mean, he made everybody yeah. stop wearing um, jerseys and switch the button ups. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, we have these false teachers and false prophets that are giving the people messages that they believe and tell people uh is going to change their life for the better and fix their problems they tell you to stack bread be financially independent and that's going to make your life better they tell you to go out and make moves and that's going to make your life better they tell you to just have love for everybody and accept everybody the way that they are and that's just going to change everything like there's false prophets and false teachers outside of the church mm. the reason why i'm bringing that up is because we did a whole episode on false teachers and one day lord willing i want to go back and do another episode that deals with false teachers and false prophets inside and outside the church mm. shout out to gordon reason he came with us and uh did that episode another thing that i learned this season is that the message of the gospel and this is something that we've been saying since I mean, really episode one, but I would say episode two, new gospel update. The gospel of the message is still relevant in today's culture. It's still the remedy of society's ills, and it's still absolutely needed every single day. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, there, there's really no better choice than to believe in the gospel. 
when it comes to dealing with the culture when it comes to dealing with the injustices that we see the lack of love and just needing god's grace on a daily basis we need the gospel every day and i know that we said that probably almost every episode that we've done in the basement but it's still relevant <laughs> and it's still needed <laughs> so anyway those are three me- th- three lessons that i learned in this past season now today's episode is called if the lord wills and we're gonna get to the comment section y'all we see y'all out there shout out to y'all yeah um maybe y'all can talk a little bit on this one we're going to talk on the phrase if the lord wills lord willing however you say it but pretty much amounting to this this or that will or won't happen if the lord wills lord willing we're gonna do this lord willing (laughs) This is going to happen or not going to happen. Yeah. Lord willing, all going back to the will of the Lord. What is God's determination on this specific thing that you're talking about? So the reason why I think that it's important that we touch on this phrase, because we do a lot of phrases in the basement. We deal with phrases that are used. Sometimes we just use them out of even we don't even think about them, what they actually mean. And we don't go into depth. We just kind of use them, just throw them out nonchalantly. Yeah, Lord willing. What does that actually mean? Can you break that down, Pastor Lowe's? Yeah, man, for sure. Um, So we're seeing you in the comment section. Keep commenting and also comment while I'm uh, attempting to explain that a little bit. So you you guys can give us your thoughts on Lord willing, if the Lord wills phrase. Yeah. So you find that in the book of James, uh, of course, you see that actually throughout scripture, but in particular, uh, James spent some time explaining it in verses uh, 13 through 16 of chapter four. Um, Just real quick about James, it was written by the half brother of Christ and the style, if you read it, it's actually resembling a lot of how Jesus spoke. Mm -hmm. You kind of see that language, that style. Um, in his writing there. It it sounds like another, almost like um, an extension of something, some things that Jesus said in the Gospels. You know, Or maybe he said to James growing up. Right, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) But there's like a lot of examples, pursuing riches, avoiding temptation, being doers of the word, having genuine faith, watching Mm. your tongue, the root cause of quarrels and fights, warning to the rich, and having patience and suffering to see those themes in the gospel in, in the gospel of james in the book of james mm-hmm. um these are things that jesus dealt with in the gospels and you actually see james communicating a lot like his brother mm-hmm. um so these things were written to believers who were scattered um some say jewish christians that were scattered because of persecution and it's important to note that james was mainly concerned with the conduct and the fruit of the saints because of the persecution. You know what I mean? Pause that right there because I think yeah. wrestling and even like interacting with the what what is being taught right now might help put a little emph- emphasis yeah, on this sure, too. Sure. So you're talking about James talking to the saints about the persecution they're going through. So was it the Lord's will for them to be persecuted? Was it the Lord's will for them to um, to be hurt and killed? Because these are I, I know right, to right. us that, you know, most of us that are studying the Bible, we read these things and we know these things. But there might be someone out there that doesn't think that it's the Lord's will today yeah. that there be persecution. And some of them may not even know that it was it's always been the lord's will from the very beginning of christianity that uh it has been his will to let the church be persecuted right that sounds crazy doesn't it because well if you had the power would you let your kid yeah people make that argument all the time would you let your kid continue to be persecuted and stuff like that yeah and you just looked in acts chapter four where it was the will of the lord Mm. to allow his son to suffer Mm. Yeah, right there we go and then we're not greater than our master right so we follow on the same pathway that he did and so of course the lord is going to allow his people to suffer for a greater purpose you know um that's what he does um he's he's that sovereign enough to preserve us through it 
And there are times where it's his permissive will to allow things to happen to God's people for a greater purpose, just like, like his son. Like maybe the Equality Act and the persecution <laughs> that might come from that. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's allowing everything for a reason. And so and he's not obligated to tell us why he does what he does. I think we forget that. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> so in that time, he allowed certain people to have power and authority and allow them to persecute his people at, uh, and test them. Really. He did it in the Old Testament because of judgment. And he does it uh, in the New Testament for a greater purpose. You know, um, I think that through much tribulation, one must enter the kingdom of God, as it says. And it's, and it's true. You know, mm. um, there's a reason why the language of cross and suffering are throughout the New Testament and even embodied in the apostles in the book of Acts. Mm. You know, so James uh, definitely in his letter was concerned uh, for the persecuted saints to keep their conduct and their fruit. You know what I'm saying? That's why he's saying what he's saying throughout mm. uh, what he's writing. And so um, in chapter four, verses 13 through 16, James is concerned for their assuming on tomorrow and what may not be. He didn't want believers to boast in arrogance about their lives to the point of not considering that God might have other plans for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't assume that. You see, particularly in verse 15, where he says instead, well, let me back up a little bit to verse 13. He says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? He says, for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. A vapor. Yeah. Instead, you ought to say, he says, if the Lord wills, mm -hmm. we will live and do this or that as it is. You boast in your arrogance. All such boasting, he says, is evil. So to assume on tomorrow things that you cannot guarantee while ignoring that God may not allow what you have planned is very arrogant. Look at the first point of that. If the first part, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. Like right. James was dealing with the fact that they were automatically taken for granted. Like they just thought for sure they were going to live. Just yeah. Yeah. If the Lord wills, we will live and also right. do this or that. It's yeah. Yeah. Come what may. You know, that's come the attitude, you know, and uh, I think James concern, too, is that, you know how it is like you you're young, you're living life. It feels like you're invincible, like you're going to live forever. You know what I'm saying? You're not thinking eternally about life, but he's making it clear that life is but a mist. Right. But a vapor. Right. So it makes you think differently about tomorrow. Uh, so um, the apostles actually it throughout, you know, uh, the book of Acts and Romans and first Corinthians, you do see them being mindful of the Lord's will when it comes to certain things. In Acts 18, uh, verse 21, when Paul left Ephesus, he wanted to return to them. But he said, I will return to you if God wills. Mm hmm. Right. So he desired to go back to his people, but he was mindful of the fact that God might not want him to go back to his people. Didn't he want to go? Was it to Spain? Yeah, he wanted to go there too. Spain. But never made it. Were you getting there? I'm sorry. What's that? Were you getting were you gonna say that? No, I, no, no. Okay, no, all right, no, all right. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. I didn't mean no, to jump no, the gun. No, that's that's good. But I do remember in the gospels, I mean in the in the in the New Testament, Paul saying it was his desire to go to Spain. Yeah. But again, it comes back to if the Lord wills. Right. He also wanted to go to Rome. He is. He actually expressed his desire to do that in Romans chapter 15, verses 30 to 33. And then he said, you know, by God's will that he would go to Rome. Right. Yeah. Um, First Corinthians 4, 16 to 21 and chapter 16, verses five through nine. Paul said, I will come to you soon if the lord wills then he also said i hope to spend some time with you if the lord he says permits so you know the apostles understood this idea of not assuming on tomorrow um and so the biblical way to deal with tomorrow that looks discouraging uh, and troubling is actually to apply the same that they did if the lord permits if the lord wills it could get worse tomorrow yeah. or it could get better yeah. But that's why 
Jesus told us not to be anxious about tomorrow, mm. but to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see that in Matthew chapter six. So I think it all it boils down to, you know, knowing our role in our world today and knowing God's role <clears throat> in tomorrow and to concern ourselves with today and let God worry about and not worry about, but God knows our tomorrow. He's already there. He's eternal. And that really puts into perspective our lives. You know, we know it's short. We might not be here tomorrow. We yep. have plans for tomorrow, but that might not happen. And that's why it's important to know if the Lord wills. If the Lord wills. So we don't assume on God or act like we're God by knowing for sure that tomorrow is going to happen the way we think. Mm. So it really does put a submissive, like this humble spirit, uh, this attitude, this posture towards things that uh only god can know and also it limits us to knowing what we can know today yeah yeah uh, so that's important man um that's the biblical way to look at it i mean we desire things good that that are good tomorrow like i want to go to church on sunday i'm hoping to be there i want to be with god's people if the lord wills though or i'm looking forward to going out to eat this weekend if the lord wills yeah it's those moments too yeah if yeah. the Lord wills. And if the Lord wills, I'll have a nice little nice steak. <laughs> <laughs> and if the Lord wills, I might get some dessert. <laughs> you might not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and if the Lord wills, I won't gain a pound after yeah, eating all of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I like about looking into this too? It reminded me how we're not of this world. Yeah. You know? And yeah. we need to be mindful of the other world we're a part of. Like, where there's not going to be a tomorrow there's always going to be a now with with god and c.s lewis uh i love his quote where he said if we find ourselves with the desire that nothing in this world can satisfy the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world you know what i'm saying so it, it this idea of the lord wills and being mindful of his will and how finite we are and how eternal god is it pushes us really to a submissive posture towards the things that god can only know yeah and so we need to know our limits our life is but a vapor it's short it's a mist so let's look at today and let's be more thankful and careful about the things today let's yeah. concern ourselves with things today and yeah. not tomorrow don't yeah. be anxious about tomorrow uh, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for the day of its own trouble. And so that applies even with this presidency. I know a lot of conservatives are just very concerned and some that call themselves Christian act like God isn't sovereign. Study Matthew 6. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Study Jesus yeah. and get back to, you know, your faith and to your roots. Um, I, I, I think having that mind state of Lord willing or if the Lord wills is where we need to be we Absolutely, need to stay yeah. right in that pocket as christians yeah stop stepping outside of that and i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna say why but before i do that sister ruby asked sorry i was late tuning in did you guys hit on when praying pray the will of god because sometimes people just pray and think that they can tell god mm. what they want and i think even to add to that maybe telling god what to do <laughs> right i yeah. think that's where she's getting at did yeah. you did you i didn't hear you touch on that at all like praying no. the will of god yeah how do you pray the will of god how do you pray in line with what we believe or what the scriptures tell us yeah the lord wills yeah first john definitely tells us to pray in his will um i would say guide your prayers according to what's clear in his will example um <laughs> you wouldn't pray for a husband, let's say, to leave his wife just because, you know, she's tripping. <laughs> you know what I mean? You would pray the Lord's will that they would stay together. Right. You know what I mean? So you wouldn't pray against God's will. Because you know what his desired will is. But what about his sovereign? The reason why I'm asking what about his sovereign will, because his sovereign will isn't always what his desired will is in scripture right like it's it, a it lot is of it's secret too yes the yeah. secret will okay yeah. so s your wife sister lynette she says what would you say to someone who says if it be god's will then that young woman who walked into planned parenthood will walk out and not abort yeah i would pray in that instant for her not to abort her child 
You know what I'm saying? Is that what she's asking? She, I think she's just kind of when we just kind of leave it up to God's will instead of actively going in doing God's will, which is to oh. tell that young lady. Yeah. You see, again, yeah, yeah. it always comes. And, and, and I'll just recommend the chapter on the will of God um, by by Wayne Grudem and his systematic theology. Yeah. He touches it because there's so many different. We'll probably have to do an episode just on the will of God. That's, that, that'd be dope. We kind of touched yeah. on it. If you go back and watch episode eight, God's plan, we did kind of touch on the plans of God, the will of God. And today we're kind of dealing with it again, but to do a whole topic on just different understandings of the will of God through scripture. Yeah. Probably should do that. Yeah. I think the, the clear will of God governs our prayers, um, but the secret things of God, that's where it gets tricky. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Like, yeah. like allowing the devil to just do certain things, like even Job, looking at Job, like, or 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 you know how job suffered or um or or even christians in the nation just being killed off and stuff yeah, like that well, like one so I'm, I'm talking about hannah this sunday for uh, a sermon on abortion actually i'm using hannah as an example and if you remember hannah's womb was closed by the lord you know it was it was his purpose it wasn't a biological issue but he closed her womb mm. and yet her prayers were answered yeah you know what i'm saying so prayer can change things you know that god is already doing like and again you're not changing his mind god overall is sovereign he knows all things but prayer does change things you know yeah. what i'm saying it, it does affect uh you know the things that we see today you know and the things that god is doing he calls us to pray um so yeah i i think yeah yeah. Along with the will of God, we shouldn't assume, uh, but with the clear things of God, we should pray accordingly uh, to what's clear um, yeah. and just trust him with the things that are unclear. Yeah. 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 I think also when we're touching on this topic to deal with the alternative or the substitutes that we find in today's culture instead of using God willing, because God willing, it means if God allows this to be so it has religious connotations. Um, other phrases that we might hear substituted or chosen as an alternative, they don't have religious connotations. So they say things like, if fate decrees, if the wind blows right, or hope it's my lucky day, even luck itself, mm. fate itself, all of which relates to the future, but does not have religious connotations. Mm. God, that, that God willing has, right? Yeah. So we even say things I was thinking about this before we went live was like knock on wood or I hear this a lot, too. in the culture that I'm from, if the universe allows it, <laughs> if the universe allows it, if the un <laughs> just the universe itself is, is chosen as a great alternative um, to using, you know, God or anything of that nature. Um, and then we also hear things like if things go if things go according to plan, which that is saying your plan, man's plan, mm. the way that we planned it, if they go according to the way that we planned it. So you're not leaving on a universe so much. Uh, you're leaning more on your plans. And if it goes according to your plans, then it'll go great in your own mind. And then also I thought about, you know, we even hear things of in the same vein as may the force be with you those type of phrases <laughs> um again yeah. because we don't like to say anything that sounds religious mm. we just would rather go with what's trendy or what's the least offensive thing that we can say yeah so anyway um i think when it comes down to lord willing and and and, and if the lord wills there's three things that we gotta look at um and three major keys humility perspective and motives humility is a major key because you got to ask yourself are you acknowledging the sovereignty of god as you're planning you ask yourself who decides what will or won't happen <laughs> uh and you need to admit the inability your inability to see from god's perspective his transcendent point of view the closest that you can get to having a view from God's transcendent transcendent uh, point of view is having the mind of Christ. 
but even having the mind of Christ is seeing through the lens of scripture right. and, and, and from uh, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So that's humility. Uh, another way uh, we need to, you know, another major key is a, it's all a matter of perspective, which we dealt with that in episode 69, having the right perspective. Um, how do you view making plans in life, showing your understanding of life itself? How do you view life? Is tomorrow promise? What's the purpose of life? What is worth devoting your time to? Can you will things into existence? Or do you hope that things will just magically happen? <laughs> How much power do you personally have in the future's outcome? All, right. All of those questions that really uh, show where your perspective is. And the third one I would say is motives. This is um, where you, you, know, you understand that planning and preparing in life is directly connected to your motives. When you're planning and preparing things in life, it's going to happen based off of your motives are your motives pure what are you doing uh, why are you doing it are your plans submitting to god's word mm. or are they coming from a place of selfishness so yeah um yeah i think when we're looking at the term lord will lord willing god if god wills or all of that you know things in those same vein we should think deeply on these things yeah why do we use these phrases so anyway, let's keep on going forward. I see everyone's comments. Oh, Sister Lynn, I said what I meant was that if young woman follows, if the young woman follows through with the abortion and doesn't heed the option of life, do we leave it up to, well, it must have not been God's will for her to choose life? Yeah. So, yeah, again, then uh, you're assuming mm -hmm. on God, you know, um, we know that the clear governs the unclear. I, I would say. It was God's will for her to not abort, mm -hmm. right? But through disobedience, she decided to. And we, in a situation like that, I would credit the disobedience and the sin, of course, to the sinner. And God's will for that not to happen as far as his desired will. You know what I'm saying? Because he does allow it to take place. You know, uh, he, he, he allows it. And uh, but we have to credit the disobedience to those who are disobedient. And so I think, it, you know, for some reason in God's mind, overall plan, he allows what he allows. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because we have to accept that because he's God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I mean, yeah, um, that's the hard part is realizing yeah. he's God and we're man. He calls us to be holy and yet he allows us to be less than that mm. you know in, in times of you know wavering in our faith but he has an ultimate purpose and a plan and that's what he's that's how he decreed it to be yeah you know what yeah. i mean and so what i would tell people too is it meditate on the passages that are clear about his will mm. first first thessalonians 4 3 for this is the will of god your sanctification that you abstain from sexual immorality right so mm. it's never god's will for you to you know uh, indulge yourself in in a sexually immoral relationship right it's his will that you be sanctified you know and so that's the way we should meditate upon passages to know the clear will of god to be holy uh to be you know those who aren't you know in other words like Another example, First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. All circumstances, whether they're favorable or not, um, hard or whatever the case is, um, those are passages I think that are important for us to meditate on and pray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, as we go forward, we're, we this is the last episode of the season season four and what we do is at the end of the season um in between seasons we we like to take a break and plan get input from you guys and also try to see which direction we're headed towards in the next season mm -hmm. even with our own life schedules we're trying to figure out if things needed to change this season we did change up we instead of going live every wednesday we started um since we have men's bible study every other wednesday on the wednesdays that we had bible study we chose to switch it to another day of the week the, the podcast so that we could spend more time with our men in the bible study yeah um 
So I bring that up to say we're going to take Lord willing, <laughs> Lord willing, a six week break. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we, we head back to, you know, we get back into the motion of, of doing podcast episodes once March hits. Um, so that would be a good time for you guys to catch up on all of the episodes that you missed. Um, I just put in a link in the comment section, uh, the YouTube, I'll put it again for those of you that are watching this now. You go ahead and like that. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to Saint Life Media. That's why I keep all of the podcast episodes and I chop each episode up into clips. Some of the, some back behind the scenes type stuff is on there too. Um, we've done episodes outside of the basement. We've done album reviews. Um, we got a book review coming up, Lord willing. Um, I'm going to talk to my man that did the pilgrim's progress book see if we can get him on to do a nice. book review yeah that'd be um good. but overall i just try to keep good content out there for you guys so that you can uh plug in and get connected with what we're doing here in the basement so if you have not already go ahead and subscribe to that youtube page go ahead and join our facebook group page um that's where you can stay connected but let's go forward. I have a new segment. This is called Wrath and Grace Family Talk. <laughs> Wrath and Grace nice. Family Talk. There's three statements I have from people that are part of Wrath and Grace. Two of them are by Kurt Kennedy. One of them is by Alexander Wade. If you don't know Kurt Kennedy, he is the co-host or, you know, the host. He has a co-host, Abner Strack, uh, of the podcast part of wrath and grace which is called cross examine you can go ahead and check him out alexander wade he's one of the one of the hosts for wrath and grace radio podcast and you can check them out as well on wrath and grace three statements statement number one and i want you to give your thoughts on it and i'll give mine and i'll throw it in the comment section for those of you that are watching first quote Kirk Kennedy said, sadly, and probably pretty soon, Christians will judge whether or not you're a Christian by what big tech or media you support. You agree with that? What's your thoughts on that right there, Los? Um, that's tough for me. I think so Christians that are very political. Yes. But Christians like me who, you know. <laughs> uh, don't preoccupy with what platform you use. Uh, I, it really doesn't matter to me, actually. Mm. I understand. I'm sympathetic to uh, some believers that might want to get off of Facebook because of them being biased and things like that. So I don't have beef with that. Um, but I think uh, the, the ones that think very politically about things, definitely they'll judge someone like why are you on facebook don't you know like they you know bring up a whole list of things um i don't think it'll be the case for all christians of course i don't think that's what kurt's saying but um i think you have to think a certain way about politics to get to that point where you're judging someone and saying they're not a christian because they're on a certain platform right yeah. So. Kirk Kennedy said, and I put it in the comment section, I said, sadly, and pretty probably pretty soon, Christians will judge whether or not you're a Christian by what big tech or big media that you support. And I, I agree that this is going to happen. Pretty much what Kurt is saying is that Christians, there's certain Christians out there, they're going to judge whether you have Facebook because uh, or Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media whatever tech company that you support or you have an account through they're going to judge you because of that company's political affiliations mm -hmm. case in point all of these social media companies that are shutting donald trump out and they're silencing him there's christians that are leaving these companies so facebook has silenced him twitter instagram has silenced him um now there's Christians who are saying leave Facebook, leave Twitter, leave leave Instagram because they silenced the president, um, the guy, the man that God was using. So they want you to boycott with them because they feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to see more of that this is the thing about cancel culture because that's what this falls into cancel culture probably came or originated in the church i believe cancel culture came from the church (laughs) blame the church (laughs) no i think so because (laughs) we have been very selective as a big church right and and who we support and then we will shut out ones who we don't support now a lot of times it's for good reasons why we support some and choose not to support others right Right. but as always the world has taken what we do and they take it to extremes and i think the church has taken it to extremes as well and cancel culture has gotten out of hand it's gotten out of control yeah i think more than anything if we're gonna talk about cancel culture then why don't we follow up with reconciliation culture how do you get to the point where after you've been canceled if you repent of it or you're no longer that way is there any way to be included again yeah because we've seen people apologize ask for forgiveness and they're not being forgiven they're forever canceled for what they did or didn't do (laughs) so cancel culture is to me um it has uh, a tendency to be on the um on the toxic side it's very toxic yeah i don't unhealthy i would say unbalanced unforgiving unloving i don't like what happened to president trump i really don't what don't you like about it well a lot of because he was silenced a lot of world leaders were against it too even some of the liberal world leaders they they just thought it was a bad idea that platforms that have such power would cancel someone out while maintaining other characters in it that are just blatantly like Mm. saying worse yeah uh it's just dangerous Mm. um yeah 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 i I agree what happened with parlor that whole thing uh dangerous i I agree i I definitely agree and and so cancel culture i agree you know uh, it's definitely dangerous i think what's more dangerous is when you have uh almost like a coordinated effort by platforms Mm. to cancel uh that's dangerous to me i think I think these uh, companies need to be more accountable just because of how powerful they are. You know what I'm saying? They've reached yeah. a point where they can affect elections and sway crowds. Yeah. You know, and you, you know, even like their policies don't match uh, the laws. Like we have supposed to have freedom of speech, but it seems like that's not the case in a lot of platforms. So cancel culture definitely, bro, is toxic to the point where uh i think these companies are dictating um content instead of allowing conversations to take place um yeah and they ha- you know joe rogan p- points out actually that there's an elite class they protect mm. and he would consider that to be dangerous i would agree with them yeah actually we're not only going to do two of these quotes today i'm we're going to save this quote for another day the third one okay only because i think when we do open up season five whenever it does open up i think that it'd be good to start with that type of question it's very deep um i just put the second quote up from our wrath and grace family it's alexander wade martin luther king wanted us to be judged by the content of our character not the color of our skin unfortunately we don't know the true content of each other's character because we're only willing to talk to and listen to people who think like us Mm. intellectual segregation is a real thing and i think that deserves an episode by itself the topic intellectual segregation but i think we can give some thoughts on this because this falls in line with what we just talked about cancel culture we may not say we're canceling somebody but that's in essence what we're doing whenever we see that they think differently than we do give an example like what um what would that look like hmm that's a good question that's why it deserves a whole episode by itself <laughs> um i think whenever we see people 
that vote differently than we do and we ask them why did you vote that way <laughs> their thoughts behind why they voted like that will yeah. make us look at them and say no 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 I'm, no 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 they're they're crazy like if i told you christians voted for biden and kamala harris for this that and the other a lot of christians would be like heck no there's no way that you can be christian and vote democrat or as a christian you can you can faithfully vote democrat yeah right and then there's other christians that say the same thing how can you be a christian and vote for trump All right a real christian um i would say voting the, your politics i would say the way that you view racism the way that you view social justice there's people that don't even like the term social justice at all and they will write somebody off so like so i forgot that so-called pastor in atlanta who ran for the senate he calls himself a pastor and he's hardcore pro-abortion yeah i saw that right getting shared the other day i guess there is a point where we can't we can't rock with you you know what i'm saying like to right. me something like abortion and you're aggressively for it um i think to me that's a cutoff i can't rock with someone who believes they could be christian and aggressively for abortion mm -hmm. you know and i think some people might have a problem with that and i think that your problem probably is because you think abortion is a political issue but it's not um it, so i do question someone's faith if they're aggressively for aborting children yeah i think it's you know I mean? uh, most political issues are ethical and spiritual as well I don't think it's just one or the other like it can only fit in one category like abortion can only fit in this category i think that it can fit in you know many different categories it's one of those multifaceted things where abortion is bigger than political yeah i me my opinion is i don't think it's political at all i, I think but it's, it's involved it's one of the heaviest politics yeah i think you're politicizing an issue that's existential right so it has to do with the very fabric of who we are like we're willing to kill babies you know so to me that's an existential issue not really a political one we make it political because it you know it it has ramifications for society when it comes to like where our money goes are we going to support abortion clinics or mills or whatever are we are we going to support plant parenthood you know with our taxes and things like that so those decisions do have to be made but when you i feel like when you narrow it down when you look at it at its core it's definitely a human life that's being taken mm. right and you can politicize that you can you know uh debate and all that but i want to isolate it to that very truth that there's some there's an image bearer that we're murdering in the womb to me that's more fundamental than politics i'm not saying you can't politicize it what i'm saying is yeah i think it falls right core. in line with slavery when when slavery was an issue yeah that definitely was an ethical and spiritual issue but it was also <laughs> politics involved too behind slavery right because in the political realm you know you have to change policies and right and, all, and no doubt but when you isolate it like the basic human right to be free yeah um yeah no absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah, in that regard yeah, yeah. so all right now the reason why i'm bringing all of this up is because we almost called this episode digital underground <laughs> yeah. you being a hip-hop head especially older yeah i thought about that i was like nah because then they're gonna look up the videos yeah and, you know what i'm saying but i think that way so digital underground why did you <laughs> want to call it digital underground because this is going to fit in line with what we got coming which is predictions going forward yeah we have predictions going forward good or bad we will talk about them because that's kind of where we're getting to in our conclusion why did you want to call it digital underground well because i i think with what i saw with platforms being um taken from like just stripped from their uh web hosts um certain voices only being allowed to talk i thought it'd be a matter of time where in cyberspace in the internet uh the the voice of the christian is going to be also uh something that's going to be cut um and we're going to have to find ways to get our yeah 
voices out. Wrath and Grace, with, I've been in talks with Johan. We're talking about different ways of taking our platform and utilizing it so that we're not dependent on social media. Mm -hmm. We have to think that way, you know? So th that's what I meant by digital underground is, you know, finding other ways to communicate what we value, what we want to say in a way that's not going to um, be in, uh, be taken from, you know, a social media account or mm. silenced, you know what I'm saying, which will happen, I believe. If it's happening now blatantly, it's going to happen. I mean, I don't right. know what else to say, you know, like, so how can we think in terms of being more uh, preemptive mm. about what's, I believe, is going to come and is here to mm. some extent. So in other countries... As a pastor, if I would say that homosexuality is a sin, I can literally be fined and my license could be taken. Mm. Um, that's around the corner. Yeah. You know, we've been saying this for years. And uh, so, yeah, I think we have to think in terms of more underground, uh, which is fine with me because that's, you know, <laughs> uh, hip hop culture. I, I've, I love underground hip hop music. That's, yeah. uh, but. That idea of being underground just means that, you know, things uh, to me, it means that things would be more pure, things would be more local, things would be more. Uh, yeah, I think the, the smaller voices to me become more pure. Right. Right. Uh, and so when you're limited like that, I think that's what I loved about underground hip hop. You had those gems that didn't go mainstream, but they did it for the love. They did it for the art. Um, I think the same could happen with how we communicate on the internet mm. maybe yeah i agree it definitely seems like it's headed that way um social persecution is looking like it's going to increase so yeah um predictions going forward you got any predictions um uh, that we might see things happen in the american church and society culture the nation the world any potential dangerous to look out for i think what we're going to experience is good for the church. Um, you, I think what we're going to see, in, in my opinion, is those big churches that are concerned about their budgets. You're going to see them just flat out be heretical, uh, if not already. Um, they're going to have to make decisions on what they can say. Uh, so, for instance, like Joel Steen's church, a lot of these big churches are probably going to start looking like that. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Society and culture, I think, um, you know, I'm already seeing people being antagonistic to the culture. Today we were at the abortion mill and some chick uh, threw her middle finger at us, said some crazy stuff. Like, I think that's going to be a norm uh, in our nation and world. Um the world is going to world like you say. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I don't I don't see that as a negative outlook. I just accept it for what it is. Um, but the positive out of it all is that I believe the true church is going to be purified. Mm. And I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be hard. It's going to hurt, but it's going to be good. Yeah. So you think it's pruning season for the American church? Here specifically in America, yes, I, I do believe that. We're going to have to make some hard choices as believers. But you know what? Uh, like I keep saying at church, all the shook ones are going to leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're going to bounce. They're not going to deal with that nonsense. I didn't come here for this. Well, yeah. if you're here for the Lord, if you're here for the gospel, um, I believe God will preserve you through persecution and purifying yeah uh, so i think what we're going to see in the american church is going to be directly related to what we see happening in culture and society so i agree with what you're saying i just look at it always as an inside outside problem and an outside inside problem so when we see because these problems do enter the church from the outside mm -hmm. we bring these uh, these problems and compromise inside of the church with us we're in the world we come into the church with these problems now they need to be solved inside of the church before we go back outside so that we can go back outside the church and be the light be the truth and 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 really be witnesses of jesus 
that show the rest of the world that we were not created to uh, have hope in this world, but that we have that we uh, have been created for a higher purpose, a higher calling, and we are part of a greater kingdom. These are things that we have to do. So we have to bring these problems inside of the church, Mm. whether we like it or not, because we got to deal with them. Yeah. But that's the best arena. The arena is inside of the church where we need to be fighting. Yeah. Well, again, and wrestling. Yeah. But there's referees. (laughs) Right. And we have rule books. (laughs) Supposed to. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm just bringing this up because, you know, we may start to see um, an American church WrestleMania event. Again, mosh pit Christianity. Um, yeah. And it's going to be because of the things that are happening in the nation, just becoming more secular, getting away from what many people would call Christian roots. Yeah. Now it's a debate within itself, but we can say that we're that the, the the American nation is going further and further away from God as a whole, even under Trump's presidency. Right? Yes, and I, speaking of that, this is what I meant by we were going to get into this later. I y'all, gonna, y'all might kill me for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I make a hot take every He's episode. Saying it, not me, y'all. Um, oh man because i know i know i know that the the this the the, the 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 kickback i might the pushback i might get from this mm-hmm. i thank god of course the music drops out i thank god <laughs> <laughs> i was think, like right the music was like yo chill i don't want no parts of this i thank god that biden and kamala have gotten into office today and going forward because it's pruning season and we're going to do an episode on this one day lord willing lord willing we're going to do an episode on this one because i think it's a good thing that some of these people who have put their hope into trump who have put their hope into a certain party who have put their hope into a certain lifestyle as a christian here in america being comfortable with their lifestyles it's getting exposed i think that god is bringing it out to the light and exposing their idolatry the same way that we saw i I look at it like this we saw people in the summertime rioting and they got exposed for their idolatry now we're seeing people rioting violently here in dc and they're being exposed for their idolatry i think that god is a god who really exposes everybody (laughs) yeah and i would even say it's hashtag you too not me too (laughs) when god is exposing it's hashtag you too Mm. we might do an episode on that one day hashtag you too I just made that one up. But it's true. I think that God really does have uh, smoke for everybody. God ain't got no picks. Anybody can get it. And everyone is guilty in God's eyes when it comes to how people have been within the last four years. Yeah. Because remember how everybody was tripping when Trump got into office? I ain't gonna lie I was very surprised When he got into office Everybody was I couldn't believe That Hillary lost But He got in And people were mad And then there was other Who was Who was very happy And now we're seeing The turning of the tables Yeah There's people Who are happy And there's a lot of people That are mad And When Trump got into office Many people were scared And right now Biden gets into office Many people are scared So All I'm saying is I thank God for it all because I know his will is being done. Yeah. So anyway. Now you're thanking, just to clarify, because I don't want people to get confused. You're definitely not saying you're thanking God as far as approving, but that God 
as a plan. Yeah. Right. So I don't some think that hear I, that and say, oh, you know, be, but I'm not one of those ones. With, I'm not one of those who, ones who thought that God was behind Trump the whole time with his hand on his shoulder saying, good job. Mm -hmm. I'm not one of them. Yeah. So if I believe that God was God's will was happening when Trump was in office, I believe God's will is happening when when uh, my man Biden is in office. Right. What I was going to say about the Trump presidency and the church is that I believe there was a deception there because I think people mixed in their patriotism with their faith. That's what I was going to bring up you know for, for I mean? potential dangers to look out Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Well, I think it's happened with his presidency and, and what's happening is people now have to kind of re-examine that. Yeah. You're forced to. And I think that's healthy. Yeah. You know, so whenever a Christian mixes in their their identity with a country mm. at the expense of the greater country, mm. the heavenly country, I think uh, it does affect your like you were preaching your ecclesiology, uh, the way you do church um, and even your mood as a believer. I've seen people just be so distraught, like like their life is over. And it's a poor testament to their faith. Um, and so I think, again, uh, what I'm saying is whether Trump or Biden, there's still deception. There's still problems that are affecting people who call themselves Christian. Yeah. Um, and that's why we have to look to the scripture as our ultimate authority and source of authority so that we can, f you know, kind of filter all these things out, you know, but the other I think what people have done is do it the other way. Um, you know, their preoccupation with politics informs their the way that they interact with society. Mm -hmm. And it's like that should come from the scripture, mm -hmm. from the truth. Preach, and, preach. Yeah. I mean, and Trump, actually, his presidency made that very confusing. Yes. So I think that uh, overall, God has an ultimate purpose and plan for allowing this to take place. And I believe it's always to beautify his church. Didn't Pence back um, out at the last minute? Back out of what? Like his support of Trump. Am I wrong? When, did yeah, I read that? I think that uh, he wasn't there at his last speech. I thought he verbally like said he wasn't in support or like he shown publicly that he was not in support of Trump. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because I saw a lot of Christians. I saw a lot of people saying he was a coward for doing that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. See, again, we've been out of all of that because our hearts are somewhere else. But anyway, um, two potential dangers to look out for. And I think it's just going to we're going to continue with these politics, but we're also going to continue with something I believe is bigger than politics. I think it deals with us on a spiritual level because idolatry is involved. I think we're going to continue to see critical race theory um be criticized and then we're going to continue to see christian nationalism criticized mm -hmm. and i read somewhere the other day nationalism in any country is wrong mm -hmm. meaning it doesn't matter if you're an american or any other citizen of another country nationalism for any country is wrong and it's not christian saw someone said that the other day and i was like dang that's good because we think of nationalism only as an american thing that's for any country yeah um sister ruby said what about how god dealt with the kings like nebuchadnezzar god's will is always in play regardless yeah i believe uh somebody said i think it was brother bobby he said um all leaders are placed by god mm -hmm. and no matter what I, I believe god used the roman army to bring to bring justice and and bring out his will during that time i really i believe that god has always used whatever leaders that he places in authority to to accomplish his will um and yeah. and he chooses on how he's going to or when he's going to humble them um i always have this i you know this phrase that it's 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 an hour an hour later type submission that god gives to you um you're either gonna bow now or later um and 
most of us going to bow now and we're going to bow later. But, you know, they, we have people that they don't want to bow now, but they will later. It is what it is. I, I'm, I'm never Damn. questioning God's timing on it, but all knees, all knees will bow. Now, let me let me make clear, like I do got opinions about this whole thing. You know, it, I don't want people to think that I don't see things either. <laughs> you know, what I mean, like uh, our last episode or we were going to actually do a, a more in-depth discussion on politics. And I was going to bring up how in 2016, the Democrat Party uh, jeopardized their own uh voting process by you know allowing hillary clinton to win just because the dnc sided with her at, and kind of chuck um sanders off like the director the dnc chair was in favor of hillary so there was a lot of perversion there um you know um so i i question a lot what took place in in the in the votes that took place there was a lot of questions i had but again, I have to clump that up into a fallen world. Mm. So I can't let my conservative views drive uh, my energies when it comes to that. I have to accept what the Bible says about the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's that's what I'm getting at is in a Trump presidency that those categories have been confused. Yeah. And uh Let's, let's let's step back to what the Bible says we are. We are Christian first. And this this present world, this country we're in, we're only passing through. You know, so save yourself a lot of heartache when you think that way, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and I see Juan. He doesn't believe that nationalism is wrong. That's my guy right there. Um, I think we should devote a whole episode to nationalism and even Christian sure. nationalism. Um, it would be a nice episode to have with a brother like Tim Bertolette. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he has thoughts on that. But let's conclude here. I think there's one more lesson that we want to talk about, and this deserves an episode by itself as well. Yeah. James 1.19. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You got any thoughts on that right there? Yeah, that's being a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Politicians are screaming, they're yelling, they're rude, uh, confused, they're uh, compromised. Um, we need a world where we say less and hear more, you know, and understand, try to understand each other more. Our, uh, you know, the people in charge in, in politics it's all strategy they're not really listening to each other they're making statements just to make points rather than sharing true conviction um so yeah i think we need to be slow to anger slow to speak and very quick to listen let's hear each other out even with the differences you know what i mean um yeah that's what we're called to do today i had a, a deep conversation with someone in our church and I thought it was going to be a back and forth debate, but we listened to each other. Mm -hmm. And the end result was that we understood where we were coming from. Mm -hmm. And uh, we concluded with, OK, we're going to help each other out. We're going to move forward together. Mm -hmm. We need more of that, man. You know, it's sad that even in the church, you don't see that as often. And But that's, you know, if we live with the reconciled life, then we should push for reconciliation with mm -hmm. one another. Yeah, um, that's the. That's what we sit on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's very important to remember in today's times. This is the reason why I don't always like to comment on what's happening in the news today. I usually let it rock out for a couple of days or even a week, sometimes a couple of weeks. Um, because I know that my first reaction isn't always my best reaction. And if I can admit that, I think that's true for most people out here. Mm. And what we usually see on the first day or two or first week or two is people's first reactions to what is happening. Mm. So if I know that about myself, I can believe that for others as well. Now, when we're looking at James 119, I think there's three things to look at. 
one he starts off by saying my beloved brothers he's saying this to beloved brothers again like you said this is being christian Mm -hmm. um and i think number two is that it's said in the context of practically living out your professed faith so he literally says right here where's it at oh i didn't i took it out i think because i had too many notes but he says it if you continue on he's pretty much getting at the point that when you are quick to listen slow to speak slow to anger you are acknowledging that when you do these things these things will bring about godliness because when you don't do these things we see unrighteous anger ungodly anger when we don't do these things so you are practically living out what you profess to believe if you do say you're christian then you should do these things not just saying it but practically living it out and i think the way we show how we respond to things that we don't like really shows um our character as a christian and it's also said right after he speaks of suffering and testing of faith that produces completeness and sanctification in us when we look at this chapter james chapter one before he says this right here be quick to listen slow to speak slow to anger he's actually speaking about suffering and our faith being tested and through that process it sanctifies us so knowing these things i think it's good to look at that again we can get some more clarity and again it deserves its own episode so yeah i think in this culture today we have to remind ourselves to to do this right here be doers of the word and not doers of the word Ears only he says it afterwards absolutely practically living out your professed faith yep so um we're gonna get to the comment section but this is where we conclude the episode i haven't said that for a long time (laughs) season four this is where we conclude season four this was the season finale episode 80 lord willing again we're going to be gone lord willing for the next couple weeks so go ahead and join our facebook page our facebook group page the basement and go ahead and like um go ahead and subscribe to the youtube page so you can check out all of the old episodes and i have all the links on there and we i also take the episodes and chop them up into clips so you want to give them plugs definitely facebook.com slash groups slash the basement be a part of it definitely want to uh still communicate uh there might be even i don't know a little video here too i don't know i'm thinking about it um just to do something as far as for pastors and things like that i'm working on that but for more information and for some updates you want to go to the group page to be involved so make sure you go and be a member uh we definitely would love to see you there in the meantime make sure you go to wrathandgrace.com to go to our website and subscribe to our podcast or audio uh you'll find the link link there in the home page uh support the ministry there are shirts we do have all sorts of things you can order in support of what we're doing here at wrath and grace we got the conference coming up we definitely got the conference coming up uh this tuesday at the uh, lancaster bible college with vody bacham timothy brindle kirk kennedy and doug logan uh and uh, it's hosted by wayne and strack will be actually the ones who moderate or host or whatever you want to call it they're just gonna uh run the discussion you know on particular topics that are important today it's a wrath and grace conference event so it's already sold out so my apologies on that we are uh me and johan are talking about doing something at the end of the year and hopefully by then the COVID restrictions are lifted and we can make it a two-day conference right there downtown uh, by our own church. Um, so continue to pray for that. We'll keep you posted on that. We definitely want to move forward to do more conferences that talk about the topics that are important to us um, with the biblical worldview. So wrathandgrace.com for more updates on that. We go on every week at 9 p.m. 
uh some wednesdays and thursdays but again we're taking a break this is uh episode 80 season four uh closing up so make sure you uh continue to keep in contact with us if you want to inbox us or whatever the case is we can answer some questions you might have patreon.com slash the basement 717 in the meantime support you know uh throwing a dollar or two you got a dollar out there you know what i'm saying do something i think the it. minimum is three dollars okay we gotta do something about that yeah give a dollar you know once we fix that's it. how patreon has it though you can the minimum oh, is three dollars really? three dollars and give three dollars you yeah. got three dollars you know what i'm saying no oh. seriously we're gonna revamp our patreon and and lord willing we'll, we'll, three dollars it's gonna be i'm hoping for it to be three dollars five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars and then from there yeah free will whatever anyone <laughs> wants to give free will offering <laughs> no man that is in the scripture so yeah that's what, you know I'm, saying. what I'm saying you got it you got it um so make sure you support. Lord willing <laughs> <laughs> make sure you support man just uh let us know what's going on and if you're in the city of lancaster you want to uh fellowship in the church that me and wayne are involved in it's called christ alone fellowship and right there's the logo you can go check it out and support us man come through and fellowship with us you know if you want to fly in or whatever uh, you can stay at wayne's house you know what i mean um, oh yeah you know <laughs> but um definitely come through and fellowship with us we're gonna move forward and see what the lord is gonna do in this season again uh for those of y'all uh, just a quick uh encouragement whatever the future is the lord wills the lord will will everything to come to pass he's sovereign and in control so hopefully 2021 is better than last year for sure but whatever the case is god is sovereign and he's in control now that trump's out of office all y'all false false prophets can stop with that <laughs> y'all can really stop with this the lord told yeah. me that trump is gonna stay in office yes Y'all need to relax. Yeah. Y'all need, need to relax, man. Y'all need to repent. How many times man. they got to be proven wrong? I don't know. People are still going to follow them. That's a, the, you know, and then so, there's people defending them. What is Trump's following? What is his, is he going to have a cult? I, I don't know. I know he got Paula White, so that's close enough. You know, <laughs> she, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, you're, if Paula White was your pastor, you got problems. I think it's, he went wrong there, so. I don't I don't all I know is that going forward Christians we got to stick closer y'all we really yeah. do yeah we really do man um shout out to brother Bobby yeah, brother man. Juan sister Ruby Amanda Jordan Bobby Frisbee Jr. brother David shows yeah what's up brother oh, man um Nevada of course she said she wasn't gonna come on but she was on what's up sis brother Jonathan Crystal Maldonado, it's good to see you. Brandon Hawk, there's a lot of new faces there, so yeah, good to see y'all. And um, thank you for shout your out support. to Tiffany, shout out to Lynette. Yeah, Lynette, what's up? <laughs> I don't know where she's at. She's she was just somewhere. right there. I don't yeah. know where she went. Uh, there she is. Yeah. Oh, she. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. I see she snuck in there. That 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 Satan's bound and not able to deceive the nations no longer. Yeah. Even though we don't talk like that. I just want to point that out. You know what I'm saying? So it's there. The historic pre is there. You just got to accept it. You know what I'm saying? It's in there. Um, definitely, man. Um, look, man, uh, we appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for your love and support. C continue to pray for us. That God will continue to provide. And uh, definitely want to have some more guests and things happening in the future. Yeah. All right. So grace and peace we will see you soon lord willing lord willing and, episode uh, 80 yeah season four finale <laughs> yeah this is crazy yo yeah it is four seasons is. we're done yeah like that's that's, that's crazy it. yeah 80 episodes in lord wow. willing more to come man yes 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 yeah. lord willing all right y'all grace and peace god bless